I haven't posted a video or a live stream in about two or three weeks. I can't even remember at this point, but for one very simple reason, Battlefield 2042 broke me. Now we're gonna discuss a lot of the reasons why today this is going to be the first video in a series where I go into just much more detail than what I'm gonna go into today about these topics that we are going to discuss. But I wanna give a general overview as to why this is the case and what I wanna do about the franchise moving forward with regards to this channel and just we can expect from the franchise in the future. So without further ado, remember if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave it a nice, thick, and juicy like as always. Of course, if you enjoy this kind of content and you want more like it, be sure to hit that big red sexy subscribe button right underneath the video. Also gotta thank my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. If you don't join, get access to the exclusive perks that they get, be sure to check out that blue join button. Anyway, let's begin. So I think one of the most obvious things with Battlefield 2042 is of course the contradictory tone to what the marketing of the game was. A lot of people have noticed that the biggest thing talked about around the game is just the voice line memes at the very end of each and every round. I'm sure everyone loves hearing Angel say three times. Yeah, Angel does it again. That was something, right? It's fun. It's so much fun. It's the greatest thing ever. Best Battlefield game ever. 10 out of 10. Uh, no, it really doesn't fit. And there's a reason that I want to talk about where story fits into Battlefield and where the tone fits into Battlefield and really how it should be done and why 2042 really misses the point. Now, of course, off the bat, obvious, kind of already stated this, it really contradicts the marketing. The marketing was all about this post-apocalyptic world in a way, that this world that's collapsing under the disasters uh, that nature is bringing due to mankind's kind of, I guess you could say, irresponsibility with nature and just the things like the mega storms that show up everywhere. You have these various cities that are putting up certain defenses to help keep these things at bay. We see this on the manifest map with the big seawall to keep the waves out. And a bunch of nations have fallen, and this has created this new faction in the game called the Nopats, who are kind of between Russia and the U.S., who are the two remaining actual standing nations. Once we get into the game, we actually just get a bunch of goofballs who are kind of running around saying these weird goofy voice lines in the middle of these very clean maps that get some atmosphere, but it's really only because of the actual gameplay going on. There's no actual real atmosphere. So the, the reason I say that there's no atmosphere is go back to Battlefield 1. You can see kind of how chunky the maps feel, how dirty they feel, how natural they feel. It feels like you're in an actual combat zone. And you get the same vibe in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3. Even though Battlefield 4 ha had some more open maps, I'm not talking about the design uh, in general here being the complaint, you still had some atmosphere from BF4. And going back to BF3, I think this had the best atmosphere in the franchise next to Battlefield 1. You kind of go back to these more natural terrains, these terrains that, and these maps really, that, that feel much more like you're in an actual war zone for the setting. And it sets a tone for that particular conflict. And that is what is so important. You have to have this window dressing for people to get into, to invest themselves into. That's the first layer. And 2042 fails at that because of how clean everything looks. There's no kind of real feel to how the maps play out. You have Discarded, which is basically a mud plane with some ships that really don't have a ton of cover in them. And then you have a map like Orbital, which has a literal runway, <laughs> or well, it's like the rocket way that they drive the rocket down. But still, you have that just as the middle of the map. It looks way too clean in a lot of places, even though there's some interesting ideas here. It's very clean. The levolution, the big destruction that we look for is really limited to just the Orbital rocket. That's the only major destruction. I know that there's technically levolution on Kaleidoscope with the little radio tower and some signs you can knock down, but let's be real, that doesn't actually count as Levolution in my opinion. That's basically nothing impressive at all. Uh, in my opinion as a player, compared to what we have seen before, we even have in Portal, the Caspian Border Tower still comes down from Battlefield 3, and that was a game uh, released in 2011. Can't do that today, but I wanna discuss where story and tone fits in Battlefield because there are talks of a Battlefield universe and Marcus Leto, who has been really one of the best people discussing Battlefield on Twitter right now is supposed to be in charge of this. And if anything, I just wanna say that Battlefield is unique among FPS shooters and you almost have to think of FPS games as an RPG in this way. There are games like hero shooters, such as Overwatch, Apex Legends, those kinds of games where you have a hero that is the vessel through which you experience a 
the game. They have their own abilities and whatnot. And you think of it sort of like a Witcher type of game where you have Geralt of Rivia, that's who you experience the world through, and while you can pick some of his decisions, it's still Geralt of Rivia making those decisions in the world, and that's what writes the story. Same with games like Overwatch and Apex Legends. Sure, you are still the player making decisions out there in those games, but because of the abilities of that character, that will have an influence as to how it goes. Whereas a game like Battlefield is more akin to Skyrim, where players want to put themselves into the game. You give them their gadgets and everything, and they go and they write their own story, like in a Skyrim, where your choices and your decisions build out the world, build out the story, build out the game. That's what Battlefield is really supposed to be like. You take your class, who doesn't necessarily have to have a face or a name. I know Battlefield 5 did something with the Elite skins, and some people really liked that. But I think for a majority of the Battlefield player base, putting yourself in the boots of these soldiers and going and writing your own story within the sandbox that is Battlefield, and really why the sandbox is so important to the experience is because you're putting yourself in there with your friends and you're having a unique experience together and that's what makes battlefield so so cool it's always going to be your story and your experience on the battlefield it's more immersive i think than anything else in the game combine that with some good window dressing in the tone and you have a pretty darn good experience see well all the other previous battlefield games next on the list skill gaps skill gaps have been absent from AAA shooters for quite a while now once they found out they could casualize the games quite a bit, make them really accessible to hit a broader audience. Skill gaps have gotten smaller and smaller. That doesn't mean that games can't be good still, but we have seen much more reduced skill gaps starting with games like Star Wars Battlefront 2015 and some of the Call of Duty games, and then of course Battlefield 1 started this for the Battlefield franchise. You start to see a lot more high splash damage weapons become much more prevalent. You see the ability to use these weapons become much easier. Things like vehicles, which should be difficult to use to some extent, and not the most accessible things in the world because of how powerful they can be, uh, they become so much more prevalent and so much more chaotic on the battlefield because of how easy it is to use them and to get kills with them that it just makes every match nuisance. Now, I'm not here to just simply complain about vehicles. I think if you're a heli pilot in Battlefield 4 and you're really damn good, well, you took the time to invest in doing that. You have a bit of respect for a player like that because it does take a lot of skill to get really good at using the vehicles in that game. They're not the most accessible in the world and not anyone can just jump in them and fly them around like a pro, whereas in 2042, I mean, if you just get in a Nightbird, you're guaranteed about five to 10 kills, depending on your skill level. It's just, it's too darn easy to do that. And that is a big issue because you end up with so many people just being able to hop in and dominate you that it creates no variation in the experience and it creates a very frustrating experience, especially on these wide open maps with very little cover where you have to cover tons of ground as an infantry player to actually get anywhere. And then as soon as you get somewhere, you get just pounded by a helicopter and you gotta kind of start all over again. It's very frustrating and just the lack of a skill gap in general. I mean, like I said, you can just hop into the game and as long as your raw FPS skills, your kind of map awareness, your ability to aim, your ability to learn maps, is at a certain level. I mean, you, you just, you can't get any better than that within this particular game. There's nothing to learn, nothing to invest in. You find the meta weapons and then that's just how good you're going to be rest of the game's life cycle. Now one of the biggest issues I have with 2042 is the quality of life, or lack thereof, the quality of life sort of things that we've enjoyed from Battlefield for so long. Things like a server browser, things like an actual scoreboard and a team-based shooter. Speaking of teams, actual teams! I guess factions is the more technical kind of thing. We do technically have two teams in each match, but they're not really distinguishable. Uh, there's never a time in the game where I'm like, oh I'm on the Russian team. Like, I genuinely can never tell which team I'm on unless I'm just like glaring at the, at the little map score on the bottom left. I'm like, oh, I'm on the Russian team. Cool. There's, there's no real distinguishing set of factions. And I think that is a huge issue. I think it would have been much cooler to have a US faction a Russian faction, kind of your more grittier two factions in the game that kind of give you that real modern near future military kind of feel. And then you have the notepads kind of be their own thing and you can get a little bit wackier with the customization there. But again, that's for that particular video that I'll talk about. But just the general lack of quality of life stuff 
is something that is a real shame because a lot of people really appreciated those things from Battlefield. Historically, Battlefield has had pretty terrible matchmaking in its games, even in BF1's heyday. I was using the server browser because using the matchmaking would put me in empty operation servers or empty conquest servers when I know for a fact there were and still are plenty of players and plenty of servers to jump in and have a full experience. But it's just an issue with the matchmaking and that's okay because we had a server browser. But now you get the servers disband every single match for no real reason in particular. They, they just doesn't make any sense. And you just sit in the main screen and wait for it to find you a new server that's probably empty or half full of bots or something like that. And that's just really really annoying and I think it comes down to a lack of understanding Battlefield at its most basic. I know the devs want to put their own vision into the game that's fine but with franchises that have been established for so long there's a certain expectation and a certain standard that needs to be met. Sure you can take it in different directions. Battlefield 1 took the franchise in a very different direction than Battlefield 3. Battlefield 4 did. Sometimes it's received well like BF1, sometimes it's not received well like Battlefield Hardline. One game or not, that game just wasn't received very well because that wasn't a direction a lot of people wanted to see the game going. That's okay, that's going to happen, some ideas are going to work, some ideas are not going to work, but those two games are distinguishedly more Battlefield than what 2042 is because 2042 just doesn't give us the basic quality of life features, it doesn't give us the basic Battlefield features like classes and factions and anything really aside from conquest and breakthrough as modes. And sure there's portal but even there I think you can see more glaring examples of a lack of understanding of what the franchise is. You have maps like No Shark Canals being selected for Battlefield 3 and Portal when No Shark Canals was very much a TDM based map in BF3. People love that map for TDM. It was okay in Conquest but it was usually very lopsided um, and just not the greatest map in the game. I wouldn't say it was terrible but it wasn't one of the fan favorites for your general Conquest mode. Some of the gunplay is not very reflective of some of the classic games are our videos showing each game's gunplay and how Portal, very different honestly, in terms of how much spread they actually have. I don't know if this is a bug or what, but it is something that was more prevalent in Bad Company 2. There's an insane amount of spread in Bad Company 2 in Portal. Um, even more so than in classic Bad Company. And then you even get to things like the helicopters. A lot of people really liked the helicopters in BF3. Back in those days, there was a decent skill gap there, but they've simply ported over the heli controls from 2042, which are just non-existent in terms of skill. And so anyone who's decently good at flying a helicopter can just dominate in BF3. It's really a pain to have to deal with. And it's honestly sad because I understand the devs wanted to put out a good product. I understand they wanted to both implement their own vision and bring back some nostalgia for players who are itching for that. But I think there's just so much missing and so much that goes in a very opposite direction from what Battlefield players really want and what we really look for, that that's why we're seeing the reaction that we're seeing. I think they could have implemented changes and they could have evolved the franchise in some pretty good ways. They just didn't go those ways. I have no problem with games evolving. I think evolution is good. That's how we got modes like operations. That's how we narrowed down the classes to four from the insane amount that was in, I think, Battle Battlefield 2 had like seven or eight classes or something crazy like that. One of those older games did, um, but they narrowed it down to balance it and create a much better experience. It, it happens over time. Games change and evolve. They make changes to help improve the experience. And the problem with 2042 at the end of the day is I feel like a lot of the changes were not made to improve the experience. They were made simply to cash in. The 128 players feels like a marketing tool that just it doesn't work because if they had tested it like the Battlefield 3 team did, they would have known that it just doesn't play very well. Things like specialists are okay, but you would know that putting down these automated devices to basically play the game for you is not something Battlefield players want. And even in Battlefront 2, we're giving feedback to DICE that this is just annoying to have officers that put down these auto turrets and kill you with just zero skill at all, at really no fault of your own. Not like you're looking for turrets on the battlefield, but now we have to. It's just, it's a very strange amalgamation of choices that don't feel like they were made in order to better the game and better the franchise they were made. You maybe cash in on a few bucks here and there, and maybe it'll be good enough for people to just sit down and enjoy and say, oh yeah, it's a pretty good game. We'll just play it and, you know, whatever. But that's not what happened. 
players are smart. We talked about this on the Battlefield show, which I was on recently and is really what helped to inspire this series of videos is Battlefield 5 really alienated the hardcore audience of Battlefield. It really made us feel like uh, not really feeling this so much, but Battlefield 2042 has re-alienated some of the hardcore guys that came back, but it's also alienated your casual audience. People are not receiving it well. I know that Steam numbers are not indicative of all platforms, but it's not a good trend to see that both Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1 have more players on Steam than 2042. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, everyone just goes back to the old games when a new game comes out. Not not always the case. You're going to have a small minority that still wishes Battlefield 2 was just simply remastered or something. But generally, when a good Battlefield comes out, people play it. Battlefield 1, for example, people played the crap out of that, people still play the crap out of it. You had just a select few that didn't think it was sandboxy enough, but they went back to Battlefield 4. But still, Battlefield 1 was a good game and people played it. Battlefield 5, not a good game. Battlefield 2042, somehow couldn't beat that. As, as far as the future of Battlefield on this channel, I, I feel like I need to discuss the game. I feel like I need to talk about the game and keep giving my feedback because I want to see the best for the franchise. Personally, in my free time, I play it for footage. That's that's about it. I'm, I'm not really playing it for fun. I would like to. I would like it to be a fun game, and we'll see what Season 1 kind of brings in terms of changes and in terms of content. But as of right now, I really do not have fun. When I jump on, I'm not saying this to hate on the game. I want it to be better. I want the game to be better. I want to enjoy Battlefield. Other FPS games do not scratch the itch for me that Battlefield does. I've been going to single player games. I've been playing a, a lot of uh, like Horizon Zero Dawn just because Forbidden West is coming out soon and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, Red Dead 2. I, I've just been playing a lot of single player games because they're so zen compared to when I play 2042 that uh, it, it's just a much better time for me and I really enjoy that and I don't want to spend my entire day just getting bad footage that uh, I don't want to use. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a bit of a longer video but i hope if you enjoyed you subscribe so you can see the videos that follow this one up they will be important and of course i will see you guys in the next video